In this video, we want to talk about seeing sine, cosine, and tangent values. And what I mean by that is having an immediate reaction as to what values would be possible for sine of some angle, or cosine or tangent. For example, let's say someone comes up to you and says the sine of this angle here is equal to negative 0.5. What do you think about that? Does that seem possible? Does that seem obviously wrong? What about this one? Cosine of, let's say, this angle here. They say that that's equal to 0.7. Does that seem crazy? Or maybe it's exactly correct? Uh, what about this? Tangent of, let's say, this angle here is equal to 1. What do we think about that? In the same way, what would we think about it if someone said, uh, I just calculated the answer to 18 times 17, and it turns out uh, the value that arises is 189,476. Then we would immediately think, okay, either he's joking or he doesn't know what he's talking about because obviously 18 times 17 is going to be something around maybe 20 times 20, maybe 400, right? It's nothing in the hundreds of thousands. Or if someone interrupted and said, no, 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 I know this one, don't tell me. 18 times 17 is negative 3.4. We would look around us and think, who are these people around me? Uh, these answers are not even within the realm of the possible. But the operative idea there is realm of the possible, that we even have a realm of the possible. If we're talking about a question like 18 times 17, there is some realm that we consider possible and other realms that we don't. What about for questions like this? Do we have a strong feeling for what the answer should be? That's what this video is about, about developing the intuition for just seeing an angle and knowing, okay, well, sign of that is going to be something like this. Okay, and one thing we're not going to be doing in this video is looking at tables like this, wonderful tables like this, that are well worth memorizing and from which you can discern that the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Right? We will not be dealing with any of these values or any tables like this because we're only interested in having a general feel for what's possible and what's not and we're not going to be worrying about decimal places or square roots. So let's start with sine. You see here we have the unit circle and I want to say that dealing with the unit circle, sine is rise. That even almost rhymes. Sine is rise. So let's say we had this angle here. Okay, now this ray that creates this angle here creates a point right here on the unit circle and I just want to know how high let's say a balloon would have to rise to get to that same level as where we cross the unit circle. And it looks like the answer is something like, if this is 0.5 and that's 1, maybe 0.8, huh? Something like that. So the sine of, let's call this alpha, sine of alpha would be something like 0.8. Let's do another example. Let's say we have this angle here. and we cross the unit circle here. Okay, so how high would a balloon have to rise to get to this level? There's my little balloon. Okay, well it's rising up to about, let's say, 0.4. Something like 0.4. So sine of this angle would be 0.4 or something thereabouts. Okay, what if I had maybe this angle here? Okay, here we're crossing the unit circle. Now, how high would the balloon have to rise? Well, in this case, the balloon's going to have to go off this cliff here, right, and go downwards. So we're moving in a negative direction. Let's say, where are we crossing the axis here? Maybe that's somewhere around negative 0.9. So that's how you find sine. But, of course, we want to make sure that this is the sine we all know and love. So let's do something akin to a proof, at least. 
So let's say we had this angle here, and we make our right triangle. There's a point where we cross the unit circle, right triangle. We'll call this alpha. So the sine of alpha would be the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And the opposite is just this here, which we were saying is just how high we have to rise, right? So we can call that rise. And the hypotenuse, of course, since this is the unit circle, is just equal to 1, so that's equal to 1, which means the sine of alpha is equal to what we're calling the rise. Okay, so now, what is cosine? Well, I would like to say that cos is run. So, for example, if we have this angle here, across the unit circle here, how far, let's say I had a stick figure here, maybe, how far would this stick your fig figure stick figure have to run to get as far as this point where we're crossing the unit circle? It looks here like that would be something around 0.6, right? Something like 0.6. So the question is how far are we gonna have to run to get to that point where we're crossing the unit circle? Let's say we had this here. Okay. So, how far is this stick figure, who starts at zero, going to have to run until he gets to this point here? Well, he's not going to have to run very far this time. Maybe that's, if this is 0.5, maybe that's 0.25. Something like that. So the cosine of this angle would be something around 0.25. Let's do another example. Let's say we had this angle here. Okay, so where are we crossing the unit circle? Right here. How far is my stick figure going to have to run until he gets as far as this point is here? Well, he's going to have to run backwards, first of all. right? If positives go in a forward direction, let's say, then the negatives are backwards. So he's going to have to run back this way and be somewhere around maybe negative 0.9 or maybe even negative 0.99, right? Something like that. Okay, and again, we want to make sure this is the cosine that we all know and love, so let's do something akin to a proof. Let's say we have this angle here. We're crossing the unit circle there. We'll draw our right triangle. This is our angle alpha. Cosine of theta would be equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse right? The adjacent side here is just how far this stick figure is going to have to run, right, to get to here. So that's just our run. And the hypotenuse, again, since we're dealing with the unit circle, is just 1. So we see that cosine of alpha is equal to what we're calling run. Okay, so if sine is rise and cosine is run, then tangent is what? Well, let's start out with our proof this time. Let's say we have this angle here, and we cross the unit circle there. We create our right triangle, and there's our angle alpha. So the tangent of alpha would be opposite over adjacent, right? So we have opposite over adjacent. And we already said that the opposite side here, this one here, is just the rise. And we already said that the adjacent side is the run. So, hmm, tangent is just rise over one. Rise over run. What does that mean? Rise over one. What does that mean? That means tangent is slope, right? Slope is just rise over run. So all we're going to have to do is look at the ray that creates the angle and see what slope it has. So let's get a good feeling for some slopes. Let's maybe look, take a look at this line here. Since the rise and the run of this line is the same, then this line would have a slope of about 1, right? And this slope here would be something around negative one, right? 
and let's just say if we stayed on the x-axis of course that would have a slope of zero so those are some points of orientation now let's just take a look at a few angles let's say I had this angle here so what would the tangent of that be tangent of alpha would be equal to well this line here we already said is has a slope of one so this must be something around one right it's as easy as that what if we had this example here let's say we were there okay so what is the slope of this angle well this line here has a slope of negative one and this is this one has a slope of zero so this is somewhere in the middle let's just say it's going to be somewhere around uh, negative 0.5 right who knows maybe it's a little higher a little lower but it's going to be somewhere around there let's do another example let's say we had this angle here straight up straight up okay so what would the tangent of that be well the slope is the first thing we need to figure out. What is the slope of this line? Well, a slope of a vertical line is not defined, right? Because rise over run, if run is zero, if, the, if this little stick man has nowhere to run, then we're dividing by zero, and that's undefined, right? So if the slope is undefined, then tangent is undefined. But that brings us to an important and interesting point about this here if this here has a slope of 1 and maybe this is slope of 2 and 4 and maybe 10 and 12 and maybe this is 50 here the closer we get to this axis here the higher number we're going to get because we're dividing and this little stick figure here is not having to run very far right so if he's only running a half of a tenth of a milliliter millimeter then we're gonna have a very high slope here so we can indeed get high as high values as we want there we could get a million or a trillion and by the same token we could get negative values as small as we wanted so while we're on that topic let's talk about the boundaries for these different functions let's say I had something like this for sine now if I start with this angle for sine sine is rise right so the balloon's not going to have to rise very high if if I'm starting here so that's somewhere around zero and as I get higher and higher and higher at this point the balloon is having to rise one but then even going here the balloon is having to rise less right so I can never get higher than one and this is the absolutely the the most that the balloon would ever have to plummet down the cliff right so negative one so whatever I do we can say this that the sine value will always be between negative 1 and 1. By the same token, if I start here with cosine, how far is my stick figure here having to run to get here? Well, it's having to run 1, right? All the way to the end of the uh, unit circle. And as I move along this circle, he, this little stick figure here is having to move less and less, right? Here he wouldn't have to move any, right? And here he would just have to be running backwards but he could never have to run more than negative one right or less than negative one I should say so in other words we can say again that we have these boundaries negative one is less than the cosine of alpha is less than or equal to one so cosine of alpha will always be between negative one and one now what about tangent we already talked about the fact that we can get as high numbers as we want and as low numbers as we want but could we salvage something here could we find something interesting what I'm looking at here is that this line has a slope of 1 this line here this x-axis here has a slope of 0 and this line here as we talked about before has a slope of negative 1 what if I just stayed in this area for just a moment between where I get a slope of 1 and a slope of negative 1 it means any angle that I have within this area, for example, if I had some angle like this, would definitely have some value between 1 and negative 1, right? Even if I had this angle here, 
that said it goes all the way go, goes all the way around I'm within this area here where the values are between negative 1 and 1 and that same realm exists on this side too right between negative 1 and this line just has a slope of 1 so I could salvage something here we could say that the tangent of alpha is between negative 1 and 1 as long as, now how could we describe this, if this angle is, is somewhere close to this x-axis, well what is this, this is, this is just 45 degrees, right? From, from here to here, that's just 45 degrees. So why don't we say it this way? As long as alpha is within 45 degrees of the x-axis, then I can have this nice statement that even for tangent, it's true that the values are between negative 1 and 1. So, armed with all of this information, let's go back and look at the examples that we started the video with. So we said that someone asserted the sign of this angle here is negative 0.5. Well, let's see if that could be true. If this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and sine is just measuring rise, right? Because sine is rise. Well, this is where we're crossing the unit circle here. We go across. That looks like it's maybe something positive, certainly. Maybe 0.6, something like that. So obviously negative 0.5 could not have been the case. What about this here? Cosine of this angle here. Well, if this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, and this is our unit circle here, now, cosine is run, right? Cos is run. We see that our little stick man is going to have to be running backwards to get there. So it's going to be something like maybe negative 0.6, maybe, something like that. It certainly could not be 0.7. So if we were to see this, we should just immediately say, okay, well, that's obviously wrong. That's not even on the right side of zero. And what about this one with tangent? Well, this one is the easiest one. We just have to look at the slope of this line. And the slope of this line is quite obviously something around negative 1 and not 1. So using these ideas, you can see the sine, cosine, and tangent values. So just remember this sine is rise, cos is run, tan is slope, we are done.